Number 38, in the overhead view of this figure here, a 300 gram ball with a speed V of 6 meters per second strikes a wall at an angle of 30 degrees and then rebounds with the same speed and angle. It is in contact with the wall for 10 milliseconds. In unit vector notation, what are letter A, the impulse on the ball from the wall and letter B, the average force on the wall from the ball. Okay, so we just need to remember that the impulse is equal to the change in the linear momentum which is equal to the final linear momentum minus the initial linear momentum and this can be written as the mass times the final velocity minus the initial velocity right so if we want to calculate the Impulse, impulse vector, we just need the velocity vectors. So that's all we're going to do. So let's call this V1 and V2. And we need to get the vector V1 and vector V2. So we have to decompose these vectors here. They're, that's not really complicated. So the angle here, it's 30 degrees. So we have this vector here which has two different components one y component and one x component so we are going to use this angle here like it was here and the sign we, are, we will get from the picture that i just draw here All right so v1 x is equal to the magnitude of v1 times the cosine of the angle and v1 y is equal to the magnitude of the uh, of the the velocity times the sine of the angle but in this case you can see that the x component is positive because this is positive and this is positive and the y component is negative so we have to apply a minus sign here for V2, we're going to do the same thing. So V2x is equal to V to the magnitude of V2 times the cosine of the angle. And V2y is equal to the magnitude of V2 times the sine of the angle. And in this time, this is positive because it points upwards its Y component. Okay, so if, if we just replace the letters by the numbers, remember, remember that this value is 6, this value is 6, 6, and 6, right? Because the magnitude of the velocities are 6 for both cases. So we will have that V1 is equal to 5.2 in the y direction minus 3 in the j direction meters per second and v2 is equal to 5.2 in the i direction plus 3 in the j direction also in meters per second so those are the velocities that we have we just need to replace them over here and then we get our answer so the impulse is going to be mass it's 300 grams so this gives us let's see so let's replace there it's 0 0.3 which multiplies 5.2 in the i direction minus sorry it's the other way around so it's v2 first but it was the same number plus 3j minus right you have a minus here minus 5.2j plus 3 5.2i plus 3 j and this is equal to 0 0.3 which multiplies 6j which is equal to 1.8 j newton second that's it i guess it is that yes that's the answer of letter a 1.8 j newton second don't forget to include the unit Letter B, the average force on the wall from the ball. So 
the impulse is equal to the average force if the force is constant, right? So we are assuming that the force is constant times delta t. So if we want the average force, that's going to be the impulse over delta t. So one thing that we have to not not to make a mistake here is that we want the let's see the force on the wall from the ball so you see that the ball pushes the wall downwards so the force will be negative because you have the force on the wall from the ball and on the ball from the wall the change for letter a is on the ball from the wall and letter b is on the wall from the ball but if you take a look at the drawing here, you can see that since the ball will start going up, the force the force on the ball should be up and applying Newton Third's law. It should the force from the ball to the wall, force on the wall from the ball, it's pointing downwards. So we just have to apply the negative sign over here and divide it by delta t, which is 10 times 10 to the minus 3 and this gives us minus 108 in the j direction newtons so that's the answer of letter b